Hello and welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams and thanks again for joining me. Yesterday on the Authority of Love, we talked about what it requires by the way of faith to truly live our lives sold out to Christ. We learned that we have to be seeking Him, His heart, His will, His kingdom, and His righteousness, what's right in His eyes, and not what we desire from Him or what we think would work best and fit how we want to make it happen. As I mentioned at the close of the message yesterday, we're going to talk today about why this level of commitment is what God calls us to in Christ and why it's so crucial in our walk with Him as Lord. Now again, you can find these messages and many others at loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com, spell it all out, put it together, loveandlordship.com, by clicking on the read, watch, or listen tabs. You can also click down on the Vimeo icon or the Podbean icon in particular and find many, if not all of these and many more uh, of, of the videos or the podcast, and please share them. Also, we'd love to know what you think. Contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com, loveandlordship, again, all spelled out and together, at gmail.com. I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to answer your questions as best I can, and if I don't know them, I know where to go and find it. And so, as I hope you hear in all of these messages and episodes, that we are going to God's Word and letting it speak for itself and building on that at all times. So thank you for following us. Thank you for the encouragement and the questions. I appreciate that. Now, this is one of the most common issues that I run into when I'm discipling others, and it's become because it is so prevalent in our churches. I've shared before, and I think I even mentioned it yesterday, about the concept of affective theology and how it permeates nearly, if not everything that we hear, and how we process it and then live it out. Several years ago, when the Lord had broken me down and truly got my attention, and captured my life for Him and for His purposes, we were doing a study in a young adults gathering. This was not just a small class or small groups. This was practically a church within itself as we had usually 300 plus that would show up on Wednesday evenings. We had small groups that we called accountability or D groups for discipleship groups, of which most of them devolved into social groups rather than any true substance with regard to either accountability or discipleship. But I digress, as do most of our teachings, classes, and groups when it comes to the issue of true discipleship. We were studying a small booklet entitled, Found, God's Will for Your Life, which had some great scriptures and insights included in the teaching. However, as I prayed and studied the booklet and God's Word for the small group that I'd been assigned to and occasionally filled in for the, the leader of the larger group, I was compelled to approach him, the young adult minister, who I dearly love and respected and still do to this day. My question was simply this. I see the title found, God's will for your life, for my life, right? As I've searched and studied God's word, even the scriptures in this book, I find it interesting that I can't find anything in it or in God's word that talks specific, specifically about God's will for my life at least not in the way that most of it's being taught. He asked what I meant, and my response has been used by the Holy Spirit to guide my study and learning ever since. What I meant is that the phrase for, for my life, God's will for my life, seems to place the emphasis on the wrong thing and keeps me going down a path that's more about me and what I get out of it, what God can do for me, rather than simply and knowing Him and His will and then being willing to walk in it. Now, all of that to lead up to today's devotional from my utmost for His highest is simply entitled, Why Can't I Follow You Now? The scripture comes from one that you'll know, and he had to go through this just like we do. John 13, 37, John records Peter saying to Lord, Peter said unto him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? Oswald Chambers, Chambers builds on this by saying, there are times when you can't understand why you can't do what you want to do. When God brings the blank space 
See that you do not fill it, but wait. The blank space may come in order to teach you what sanctification means, and I say this, how he is setting you apart for his purposes and will. Or it may come after sanctification to teach you what service means. And I add, how will he use you for his kingdom and glory? Never run before God's guidance. If there is the slightest doubt, then he's not guiding. Whatever there is doubt, don't. If we're trusting him, we can do this. If we're not, we can't because our idea of what should, it should look like and what we get, should get out of it, that becomes our idol. Chambers continues, In the beginning, you may see clearly what God's will is. The severance of a friendship, the breaking off of a business relationship, something you feel distinctly before God is his will for you to do. Never do it on the impulse of that feeling. If you do, you will end up in making difficulties that will take years of time to put right. And I add, I have seen this happen not only in my life, but a large percentage of the people that I have counseled and discipled over the last 30 plus years. Chambers says, watch for God's time to bring it around, and he will do it without any heartbreak or disappointment. Now, now, I question that a little bit because there still may be some heartbreak or disappointment because even as you wait on him, the flesh gets in the way and I have my ideas and then he goes in another way. Now, am I going to be obedient to him or twist it and make it turn out the way I want it to? That's when heartbreak and disappointment can come in because he's still got some work to do. Nevertheless, the principles hold true. When it is a question of the providential will of God, wait for God to move. That's hard, isn't it? Once again, this requires, from yesterday's Devo, our going out without knowing, but simply putting our faith in him and his work in and through you and me, us. The devotional continues, Peter did not wait on God. He forecast in his own mind where the test would come, and the test came where he did not expect it. I will lay down my life for your sake, Peter said to Jesus. Peter's declaration was honest but ignorant. Jesus answered him, The rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. This was said with a deeper knowledge of Peter than Peter had of himself. He could not follow Jesus because he did not know himself of what he was capable. Listen to this. This is powerful, and I see it all the time. Natural devotion, and I add the word passion here, may be all very well to attract us to Jesus, to make us feel his fascination, but it will never make us disciples. Natural devotion will always deny Jesus somewhere or other. We are seeing that over and over again in the individual walk of many and in many of our churches today. One of the years when I was reading through this, I had a situation with a young man I was discipling. He'd been married, had a child, divorced, all while not walking with the Lord. He'd since come to know the Lord and was beginning to grow in his discipleship walk. He was applying this in his personal life and in parenting his son now, who had come back into his life. With a background of sexual immorality and heavy alcohol consumption, and as his ex-wife and mother of his son had continued to walk in that life, heavily engaged in the alcohol and drugs, my friend began to desire, rightly thinking and rightly so, in line with God's word, that he should reconcile and remarry her. All right? Here's where we were able to go deeper in line with God's word and this last statement in today's devotional and message. Remember what that was. Natural devotion will always deny Jesus somewhere or other. He was still very immature in his walk. She had no walk with the Lord at this time, and yet in desiring to make it happen out of the truth of God's word but his natural fleshly devotion to the God in his word, he forced the issue and both of them backslid and took many more years for him and eventually her to really understand God and his workings and timing. You see, we've got to wait and make sure that even when we're passionate about it and even when we know the truth, remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding of that word of the Lord. Lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, 
He'll make your path straight. He'll do it in His timing. That's what we're talking about today and, and, and yesterday when we talk about going out without knowing and then all of a sudden go, well, wait a minute, why can't I follow you now? Today's message. Here's some food for thought as we wrap up. Faith not only requires us to go out without knowing, but also requires that we seek and are willing to wait on the Lord. It is during this time that we not only learn more, but he is able to, this is tough, prune, cleanse, prepare, and strengthen. And all of those require work and discipline, ours and his. Strengthen us for what he knows is best if we are willing to follow him according to his perfect plan and timeline. God is patient, and as we grow and learn more and more that we count on him in all things and at all times, then we learn not to get in a hurry, as Peter did and taught us in so doing, to serve out of our natural passion and devotion. Let the Lord work on you so he can faithfully work in and through you to reach others and bring him glory. After all, he didn't say, go make zealots full of passion. He said, go, and the Greek word there is, as you go along the way, as you live your life, go without knowing oftentimes. Go and make disciples. He needs those who will discipline their flesh and their passions in line with his word and spirit. Love in action. Spend time in his word with God in prayer and listening to him every day. Begin with the scriptures in this message. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. That's one of his roles, as we say most often during this time. He will do it, but oftentimes we have to be patient in that. Number three, think and journal about a time when you ran ahead of the Lord. I could make a, a list of them. And number four, thinking about the previous item, making that list. What did you learn and how has it impacted your walk with him and how he's using you to reach others now? Grow you in him and then reach others now. Tomorrow's Wednesday for women with Adia Wishner from Kentucky Right to Life. Adia brings so much wisdom and experience to these issues, and I'm always excited to hear how the Lord has led her and what he's laid on her mind to share with us. So be sure to join us again tomorrow and invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies again to join us to hear these truths that we pray are always from God's word and in line with his word and in his perfect timing. Again, you can go to our website, www.loveandlordship.com to find out more. The book icon is right there in the middle of the homepage. You can read, watch, and listen to many of these and many other articles. Uh, you can give. There's a give tab there. If you feel led by the Lord to do so, we thank you. All donations are tax deductible. It only take you a minute or two. And if it's not us, you hear me say this every time I talk about this in giving, Please keep praying for the Lord to show you where he would desire for you to partner with him and give and then be obedient out of love for him and follow through. It may not be us, and that's fine. I know the Lord will provide, but it's there for you if it is us, and if not, keep on praying. You can donate through Cash App. Go to Cash App and look for Love and Lordship. You can do it by mail. We've talked about that before. Mail it to Love and Lordship to 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. That's Love and Lordship to 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for my good friend Bill Reeser and Encounter, and then at 1245, another good friend Greg Horn, and hope is here. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.